Welcome to worship here at Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church on August 23rd, 2020. We welcome you to worship and pray that God's presence will be with you as you worship with us. I am Reverend Bruce Jones. I am the interim pastor here at Greenfield Avenue. This is the 12th Sunday of Pentecost, and we pray that whether you join us on Sunday morning at 930 or through YouTube and Facebook, we do ask that you gather together in the presence of God with joy and remembrance as we remember our faith history, as we remember Moses, who arrived at a time when the Egyptians had forgotten who Joseph was. Please listen to our gathering music and may you focus on God's presence in your life through the prayer of meditation and the music provided by Sherry Mazakowski, our music minister. Prelude in B major. Thank you. 
Good morning. We gather to give the Lord our God honor with all our heart. We praise the Lord of, of all creation in response to the gift of steadfast love. The Lord calls us out of a world of competition and fear. We hear Christ's call to a different way of living. Let us go to the house of the Lord and walk with Jesus. We gather to worship the everlasting God and live. And the first hymn this morning will be number 375, Shall We Gather at the River? God saves us despite us being unworthy of that salvation. 
In response to that grace, let us confess the ways we have fallen short. God of endless mercy, you have called us to unity, but often we have isolated ourselves from those whom we disagree. We find challenges to reach out, especially with physical distance, to those whom we need to forgive and reconcile our re relationship. Forgive us for the times we have turned our backs on those who are different or hold different viewpoints. Forgive us, Lord, when we are closed and locked up with negative acts, thoughts, and emotions. Help us to open our hearts to the values of your kingdom, open our eyes to see your kingdom, and help us to be an active part of it. Open our ears to those who cry for help and justice. Lord, have mercy upon us and hear us as we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God gives many gifts. God calls us to be the one body of Christ, our Lord. The Spirit of God empowers us to receive the gift of forgiveness. We honor our Lord with faith when we share this gift with all through the ministry of reconciliation. We are forgiven, loved, and accepted. Alleluia. Amen. In Christ, we are reconciled. The Spirit unites us, and we learn to live in peace. Be at peace as you are reconciled with the Lord and others. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. The Holy One equips us for the service of Christ. May the peace of Christ guide you each and every day. The prayer for illumination invites the Spirit of God to shed light of the truth and wisdom on our understanding of the written word. Join me as we approach God's insight and the reading of the Holy Word. Faithful God, we come into your presence deeply grateful for the unfailing love and faithfulness. We come before you to listen to the divine wisdom of scripture with our hearts and minds. Open our eyes to see and know you here among us. Open our ears to recognize your voice and then send us out from here to live and work in the world as your faithful disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. This morning's scripture comes to us from Exodus 1, 8 and 2, 10, the time of Moses. Now a new king arose over Egypt who did not know Joseph. He said to his people, look, the Israelite people are more numerous and more powerful than we. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them or they will increase in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore, they set taskmasters over to them to oppress them with forced labor. They built supply cities, Python and Ramesses for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread so that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service in mortar and brick and in every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks they imposed on them. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shepra and the other Hua, when you act as midwives to the Hebrews, women, and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him, but if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, why have you done this and allowed the boys to live? The midwives said to Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth 
before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. Now a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him three months. Then she could hide him no longer. She got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with butamun and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her attendants walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? Pharaoh's daughter said to her, yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him as her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. Our special music today is Wade in the Water, a Negro spiritual. One of the challenges of interim ministry is not knowing where the congregation has been, what the congregational history is. Who have you been as a congregation, as one of God's people? And I believe our history, yours and mine, impact 
who we are and how we respond to different situations in ministry. Before preparing to preach, I had never heard of philosopher George Santayana, 1863 to 1952, but I've quoted him from his five volume Life of Reason, volume one, Common Sense, and maybe you have two, and I'll quote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. It may have been a little bit different in your, your term and how you've said it, but if we forget our history, we forget who we are and whose we are, we are doomed. We are going to have to learn the lesson over again. So let me give you a little history lesson. My grampy, my maternal grandfather was born on August 23rd, 1892. If he were still alive, he'd be 128 years this year but he did die in January of 1986, my senior year in college. He was 93 at the time. And I never knew his wife, Ada May, who was born July 24th, a day after my birthday in 1897, a few years before mine. But she died in November of 1944 at the age of 47, when my mom was just 11 years old. And yet those events are how mom was developed as a young girl. Those events that I never experienced impacted who I was as a child. During this time, Ada was sick and mom tagged along with her father doing farm chores and developed a very strong relationship with her father, my grampy. And then when Ada died, she continued to tag along because her older sisters, Gwen and Marcia, were taking care of the younger siblings, Bud, Sonny, Dawn, and Ruthie. These events and relationships formed her into the woman that she was. And when Marcia and Gwen got married and moved out of the house, she then took over that role of cooking and caring for others. Our scripture today comes at the beginning of Exodus, and it's a jump of about 400 years from the end of Genesis that we preached on last week. When the Israelites were welcomed and honored because of Joseph's position in Pharaoh's court. But now a new Pharaoh has taken over and does not remember Joseph and his work as a life preserver for the nation. So the events of Exodus will form the Israelite nation and their history as they move out into the world. In my training as a pastor, I have spent time reflecting on my own family of origin and how it impacts my life and sometimes how that impacts how I respond to others who remind me of particular family members. I've become aware that certain people who even when I first meet them, can trigger responses based on relationships with my own siblings. Some of those are positive and others are a little more challenging. But as I become aware, sometimes I hold an initial response. It stays in my thought bubble instead of being spoken. And as an interim, I've explored even deeper connections using Murray Bowen's family systems theory based on Edwin Freeman's Generation to Generation where things that happened in one generation impact those of the next generation and the next. One of the most startling nuggets of information gained through this training was that events from our history, even those experienced by our ancestors that we've never met can impact who we are. Events in a congregation that happened 100 years ago or 95 years ago or 175 years ago can change and impact how we collectively gather together as God's people today. Here's an example that really caught my attention. The church consultant received a call from a pastor who was struggling with church conflict on a Friday afternoon. She had been there for just a few years, but had was one in a long line of a short pastorate, a revolving door, pastors coming and going. The pastor expressed her frustration with the phrase, I feel like I've been hit by a freight train. As the consultant explored the history of the congregation, he discovered an amazing connection that although they had never talked about it, 
in the history of the congregation. And most of the people, a member of the congregation, did not remember the history. Over 100 years ago, a well-loved pastor had died by an accident. And you guessed it, he was hit by a train. Another pastor, about 30 years later, died by suicide when he stepped in front of a train. The system still responded to events with that anxiety of their past that they had never really talked about and processed. And no one living had really been a witness to those events when they happened, but they impacted how they responded as a congregation. As an interim pastor guiding congregations in times of transitions, we help congregations explore some of their history. And we're a little challenged right now getting together and having discussions. So what I invite you to do this week in preparation for a time when we can have this discussion is what is the history of Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church? And how does the formation of this congregation and its history impact you? And the fun one could be, which family members remind you of particular members of God's family, this congregation? And how do you respond? And how might you be more faithful to God in a different response by holding your tongue just a little bit? Remember the Lord our God is with us in the past and in the future. Our history who defines who we are today can impact who we become as God's people. And understanding our past, even way back 400 years ago when first Christians came to this country, might impact who we are and how we serve the risen Lord. And even if we don't know what happened, even if we don't know who did something, it can impact who we are today as a people of God and how we respond to others with God's grace. So let us seek the Lord and God's grace and peace to find healthy ways to respond with compassion and service and hope. To God be the glory. Amen. to a 
Join with me in the spirit of prayer, God and creator of all humankind. We gather together as your people to think about and reflect on the history and your guiding hand throughout history, how you have formed us into the people of God who worship your son, Jesus Christ, through the power of your spirit, that the church might be the body of Christ, that we might be one with our Lord that we might bring peace and hope to a nation. May we be renewed with our minds as we seek Christ and rekindle our love for one another in our hearts so that powered by the spirit, we might serve God and neighbor with oneness of heart and mind. May we see in your oneness our need for unity in the body of Christ. May we find ways to deal with one another and seek your power in our community. May we see in your creativity the need for diversity. May we see your grace in our lives as we love one another. Sustain us as we work and serve you with hope. Strengthen us with your spirit as your people, that we may be a light to the world. We might bring light to people who live in darkness. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the light of the world, we pray. We pray for those who are serving in hospitals and medical clinics as they are under pressure as they battle COVID. We pray for our law enforcement and fire departments as they serve their communities. We pray for their health and their safety. We pray for JT's coworker, Nathan, for his sister-in-law and niece who lost their husband and father this last week at the age of 31. May they find peace and comfort and understanding in their time of grief. And for Nathan's brother, Nick, who was anxiously waiting for results to see his diagnosis. And we pray for a positive report. And this time of year, we pray for our teachers and students and all those involved with the returning to school, bus drivers and educational assistants and library staff. We pray for their safety and their care for a healthy return. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who calls us to pray with one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We bring our gifts to the Lord to be stored for the future. We trust in the promise of eternal life and constant care. We encourage you to continue your support of Christ's work through Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church with your pledges and contributions. We remember the Lord works through us. For the gifts sent in and ready for tomorrow's mail, let us give thanks and praise as we dedicate God's work among us. Join me in prayer. Faithful God, we bring our gifts with humility. We trust in your promises as we observe your faithfulness. Multiply these gifts for ministries 
that empower people to trust in your holy word. We pray in the name of the holiest of teachers, Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Hymn number 700, I'm going to live so God can use me. Another spiritual. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna live so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm gonna work so Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And through the power of the Spirit, reflect and learn about the history of God's guiding hand in your life and in your community. That as the family of God, we may bring grace and hope, compassion and peace to a world in great need of God's love and power. Now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you this day and forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen.